Chair of the session, uh, the conveners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning to you all. I would like to comfort the mistress of ceremonies that uh, I'll use less than 10 minutes. Yes, I'll use less than 10 minutes. And uh, I want to seek your indulgence. I should be in a meeting somewhere, but this is also extremely important. Uh, I want to, um, first of all, associate with what Annette said, Annette of uh, EcoBank, uh, the ministry. I normally give assignments to, my, to the team so I assigned them to find out the most digitally competent bank. And they give me some results. And the results indeed indicate that uh, EcoBank is one of the top three in as far as uh, digital innovation is concerned. <laughs> I, I won't say what number, but among the top three. And I don't know whether your, your person responsible for IT still has to do a presentation, but uh, I, I thought I should say that. But um, uh, in terms of uh, what I was requested to talk about, the implications in the effective participation of Uganda's entrepreneurs and SMEs in the new market frontier, I'll speak from the government perspective. What we need to do or what preparation we need to do as government to ensure that uh, our SMEs indeed participate effectively. The most important thing that we need to observe is that, uh, or acknowledge, is that the growth in technology is seamless. The expectation is if there is 4G or 5G in California, the same should be in Kampala. So if we have infrastructure that cannot support the latest technologies, then we are undermining the ability of our SMEs to participate effectively in the, uh, in, in the market or in the new market frontier as it is. So to bridge that gap, of course, government uses policy policy intervention to address uh, issues such as infrastructure. And uh, what we have done is uh, to put together policy that compels both government and the private sector, the operators, the communications operators, to share infrastructure. Because as you will know, over the years, as uh, the telecom operators or ICT operators. As they invest in infrastructure, everybody prefers to put up their own must. But the reality is this must can be shared because everybody just needs to mount their own technology and provide a service. But the culture has been everybody looks for their capital and then transfer the cost of doing business, the costs of that investment to you and I and the SMEs. So in that respect, uh, we have put together guidelines that will support our efforts to ensure that uh, infrastructure is shared. Now, beyond infrastructure, as you know, in the ICT perspective, we have the ICT infrastructure, which, is, which you can look at as a road, but then we need the vehicles to move on the infrastructure, which is the services or the e-services. But what is critical in the area of e-services is the extent to which we integrate all the systems that are, reside in the private sector as well as government so that we ease the, the ability to do business by the SMEs. 
And what that means, and uh, I commend URA, they are not very popular for reasons we all know, because they collect taxes from us, but I commend them for ensuring that any interaction you need with uh, the Revenue Authority is online and it's deliberate. So you don't have to go to fill a form at the URA Customs Office to trade with them. You sit in the comfort of your office, the same way we sit in the comfort of our homes and we trade with EcoBank, and then you trade with, uh, with URA. But URA on its own is not sufficient. We must be able to do the same when I'm registering a business with uh, uh, the registrar of companies. You must be able to do the same when uh, you're dealing with uh, Uganda Investment Authority, if you're an investor setting up in the country. But also, most importantly, there is data that we as government hold. You all registered the Ugandans in the room. You all registered uh, for the national ID. So there is no reason whatsoever to ask why any information that relates to you Uh, whether you're male or female, really that is not going to change. So there's no reason to ask why we should have forms all over government offices collecting the same information that government already has. And that does affect SMEs. So what we're doing as government is to ensure that we integrate all these systems so that they start speaking to each other with the aim of easing doing business in the country. We are talking about trade, uh, but, uh, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's in the context of competition. We are competing with everybody on the continent. Now, you don't want to have a country where, for the people you're competing with, it takes them one day to get a passport, and for you, it will take two months. We shall not compete. We won't access that market. And yet the reason you're doing that is that the National Identification Registration Authority is under Ministry of Internal Affairs. The Department of Immigration that issues those passports is also under the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And then you start filling forms of information that the Ministry of Internal Affairs already has. That's not fair. And that undermines our competitiveness. So we are saying all these systems must, by and large, speak to each other so that we ease uh, the ability for SMEs to do business. And I think if that is not done, we shall grossly undermine the ability of SMEs to, 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 to access the markets or be competitive for that matter. The other very important thing is, as you know, uh, when they talk about the fourth industrial revolution, we talk about artificial intelligence, big data, among others. And the reason many of the companies, global companies, that operate in artificial intelligence are successful is because they have been able to harness data. All of us seated here, uh, we have uh, a Google, Yahoo, or whatever account, and uh, without reading the terms and conditions, you click that button and say, or that box and say, you agree the terms and conditions. The terms are such that that data is held in California or in some capital somewhere in Europe, and the implication is perhaps they can use the data in whichever way that they want. Now, what we've done as government is uh, to make the first intervention and uh, create a Tier 3 data center within the country. And the reason we are doing that is to ensure, or at least to provide an opportunity for the likes of Safe Border here to do data analytics and be the next Facebook on the continent and then export that sort of service. Because all Facebook does is they harness your data. You go and post pictures of all the parties that, of all the parties that you've attended. And then they're able, using data analytics, to scan and see that on the table where you normally sit, there's a bottle of whiskey. And then the next thing they will do is send you an advert of a new whiskey, artificial intelligence. And then um, you have uh, the likes of Google. All these are trading in uh, analytics. 
Google spies on us every other day. Every day. And we do it voluntarily because we tick that box of you agree to the terms and conditions. So they know because I have a Google account, I'm at the Sheraton, they can know everything, everywhere you have gone. So if you are tempted to deny, they can give you the evidence in very, very certain terms. You were in Intinda, you made a call, and you are you're actually standing next to Tusky with precision, artificial intelligence. So we are saying that rather than host all this data that we have in the country abroad, we can host it in the country and Ugandans can create enterprises out of that data. In saying that, we are mindful of our cyber security and its importance. It's very, extremely important that our SMEs, as you trade, you know there used to be scams that used to come in uh, letters. For those of you as old as I am, I see some friends in the room, so I'm confident. <laughs> I see Tinka looking at uh, Sejaka, so I'm talking about you too. <clears throat> so um, you remember they said us in the post, in the post, they would send you, uh, my father died, I need an account, and so on and so forth. That is no longer necessary. You just need to be reckless with your password. Uh, they ask you for a password. Google asks you and you say Vincent Bajiri. So there are people who sit there and just, their job is to just try. Or if you give, they send you an email and they tell you, this is from, uh, and then you click. Once you click, you, you surrender your credentials. And the next thing you hear, people are calling you. I understand you're stuck in, a, in, a, in Accra. What's the problem? No, I'm in Kampala. No, but you just sent me an email. You know, those sort of things. So it's important that for the SMEs, they are also given adequate information about cyber securities and the dangers of uh, cyber security. I've spoken about uh, shared infrastructure and the need. The reason why we've set up data centers is to ensure, because it's expensive to set up data centers, so government will take that responsibility and set up data centers where we can all uh, utilize and keep our data. The other very critical one is what we call the internet exchange point. When you send an email, even uh, my neighbor, Miss Mbabali here, if she were to send me an email, it would first go through Europe before it gets to my phone. <clears throat> and that increases the cost of uh, connectivity. So we are saying that whereas we have an internet exchange point within the country, we need to have another comprehensive internet exchange point so that local traffic remains within the country. That traffic remains within the country because those are the issues that uh, increase the cost of uh, connectivity. And as I conclude, to keep within uh, the 10 minutes or less, is uh, it's extremely important that uh, we are mindful of things like automated inspection of products. If you're going to trade, first and foremost, your products must be coded. You must code your products. We don't have that. Uh, some products indeed are coded, but some are not coded. But they may be useful or necessary on the continent. And therefore, if you've not done that uh, uh, product coding, it may be extremely hard for those to go into the market. And of course, certainly, product certification. What you're exporting to the rest of Africa, is it certified? And if it is certified, it's certified by who? With those remarks, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to go and have my tea party in the parliament, if there is anything like that. Thank you very much.